sure you, me encourage you to continue to pray for them. I'm going to have Brother Larice come on up. I don't want you to be bashful on time. We normally get out of here at 2.30, and so they're used to this. <laughs> and I have to be careful because missionaries have like a different time zone. Yes, different time schedule, different time zone. Uh, whenever you get there, you get there. Whenever you start, you start. And uh, it was very interesting and awesome over in Guatemala. He mentioned a lot of things over in Sunday school about possible mission trips. He came, he started in January over there, worked all the way down to December, finished up November, which was his soul winning emphasis, and told us about some things going on with that. And then he started into December, and I said, hang on, I want our people to hear about that. So he's going to share with you just a little bit what goes on to December. Uh, the kids have been doing a readathon. And let's see, let's pick on Joe. I feel like we need to pick on Joe. How many books have you read, Joe? Do you know? A lot. <laughs> Do, have you, like, tallied them somewhere? We haven't counted them all yet. Okay, so he's, they, they have them, they have them on, on charts and everything else. That they're, They've got uh, reading their books uh, because they're limited. They can't just go and get a job. And so they do what they can to raise money. We've, we've given money to this before. I would encourage you to consider uh, supporting this. It's not just, it, I mean, it is feeding the, the, feeding the poor, which, which Christ said to do. Clothing, which Christ said to do, but also reaches for their soul. And so I, he was telling me a little bit more about that yesterday. And I said, would you please share that with our people? I want to be part of that. There's so many other ones that he mentioned in Sunday school that I just get so anxious. I'm like, man, I want to have a piece of that. I want to be able to say I invested in that. I want to have part of that. But um, then he's going to preach for us, uh, share with us what the Lord has shared with him. I want you to sit up, pay close attention, open up your heart, and um, ask the Lord to do something special in your heart over the next 30 minutes here. Thank you, Brother Lee. Thank you so much, Brother Justice. Well, it's, it's so such of a uh, joy to be here this morning and uh, it's wonderful to see uh, Brother Justice love and care uh, for the veterans, uh, if you would, today. And it's wonderful to see uh, the time that he takes to honor uh, 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 the veterans. That kind of makes me think about the song that says, I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. So someday we all be in heaven and it will be our turn in front of Christ. Uh, when he will reward us uh, for the time that we spent on earth preaching the gospel, investing in a worldwide mission, and then uh, what a blessing, what an honor to be able to see that. One of our young lady in our church backslid. Her name is Loriana, and uh, she unfortunately died. Very young, uh, 28 years old. So at our church, we decided to uh, hold the watch night service uh, for her and her mom, a member of our church, stepdad. And uh, as we were holding this watch night service, a fella who, is, uh, who was running for mayor in town showed up. And his assistant showed up. Loriana was a dear friend. She had some good connections. Being a typical pastor, I, I have some, if you would, projects that I'm working on that I need authorization from the government offices, and I thought this is good, a good opportunity for me to talk to this guy who's going to be the next mayor. So I ran inside the church service, uh, building out it, should I say, and I began to talk to him, introducing myself, what I do, and then our involvement, if you would, in the community. And to my surprise, as I shut my mouth, his assistant began to talk. And the assistant began to persuade this next mayor of our town in regard to the changes he have seen and noticed in our community. And he said to the uh, fella who would be the next mayor that 14 years ago, he said, I watched the Haitian people here in this neighborhood, this community. They had no vision. They had no value. They used to fight, killing each other. They looked filthy and dirty on the street. 
But he said, this pastor came here, he says, uh, to town, preaching the gospel to them, getting them saved. But he says, now they, they have value. They, they, they get married. They go to work. They're building houses. And I sat there, stood there for at least 30 minutes in an amazing shot at the difference this fella has noticed in our community, in our church, in regard to what God has been doing. As we talk, the fella who is going to be the mayor, he got so excited and he said, are there any activities that you do on a yearly basis here? that I can invite all the different government leaders in our region to come so they can see what you're doing here. And he says, I wish there was at least 10 pastors like you. He says, in our province, we could turn this province, he says, upside down. And I say, yeah, I said, there's, there's a activity we do every year. I think you will enjoy it. And if you bring the government leaders, they would love to see both Dominican kids and also Haitian kids as we're giving them gifts. And that's the Christmas project that we do on a yearly basis. So what we do is, every year we give about between 200 and 300 uh, shoe boxes filled with little gifts uh, to kids both in our church, also in Haiti, and also in our area. And so we have like a Christmas service, and I'm the one who pull it together, organize it, and I write a little play as a way to present the gospel that become the kind of focal point of the service. Uh, and then, um, then we serve a meal. And then my, my wife, obviously, she is uh, intricate, and this is where our children, uh, she will have them, uh, if you would, several or maybe bunches of books, as Joey mentioned. We will have um, sponsors here in the state, uh, people who donate money for the amount of books that they read. And this is the money that we use to um, ship those shoe boxes uh, to the Dominican Republic. We use part of that money to pay for the meals. We, we will use part of that money to send also to Haiti and then we also will use that money for various other, if you would, different activities that we do, if you would, uh, this Christmas uh, coming up. So you could pray uh, that God will use uh, this uh, Christmas service. We're going to have several government leaders who will be present. And then uh, our desire is that God will use, uh, if you would, that service to give him the gospel and then to get them on board, to show them that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is truly the hope um, for both the Haitian people and also for uh, the Dominican kids, and, then, uh, and also to uh, kind of open their heart uh, to cooperate with us. Uh, I'll give you an example. It's been six months that I've been fighting just to get a permission to be able to sink a well in our church. Through the, all the red tapes in the government offices, it's not been easy to get that done yet. So by having these guys on my side, it will make my, my work a lot more easier uh, to be able to give the kind of service that we desire to give to our, if you will, community, and as we serve both the Haitian people and the Dominican people. This year, uh, my wife is trying to raise between $5,000 US and $7,000 to be able to, um, uh, may I say, put together this uh, Christmas service. Uh, once again, part of it will go uh, to Haiti and part will stay in the Dominican Republic. Now, early in Sunday school, we work between, between 12 and 25 churches. Uh, the project that my wife does, we're not touching all of these churches. Maybe we touching like five or six. Our goal in the future is hopefully we'll be able to expand this project where we can actually get all these 25 churches involved, just 200 kids, possibly to close children. The future, if you would, if it's God's will. So once again, it's a blessing to be here. I will not keep you long. Uh, Brother uh, Justice said I can preach until 2 o'clock, but the only, the truth of the matter is, 
I'm hungry. I don't think I can push that long. You know? All right. So uh, open your Bibles, if you would, with me. We're going to go in the book of Genesis uh, 27. Uh, we're going to read in verse 1. Uh, Genesis 27. We're going to read in verse 1. I do appreciate uh, my wife and her intricate involvement. Uh, once again, this thing about uh, the Christmas project, that's a baby, uh, her thing. Uh, my kids, they're all involved, and I'm just, you know, involved in God to put the uh, uh, service together for them and then try to do as much as I can uh, to support them. But it's all of my wife. So if you want... To know more about it after the service, she'd be happy uh, to talk to you about it. Genesis 27, verse 1. The Bible says this, And it came to pass that when Isaac was old, and his eyes were dim, uh, uh, so that he could not see, he called Esau, his eldest son, and said unto him, My son, and he said unto uh, him, Behold, he am I. And he said, Behold now, I am old. And I know not the day of my death, not therefore take, I pray thee, uh, thy weapons, thy quaver, and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison, and make me savory meat, such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. And Rebekah uh, heard when Isaac spake uh, to Esau, his son, and uh, Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to uh, bring it. And Rebekah spake unto uh, Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I hear thy father speak unto uh, Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord before my death. Uh, now therefore, my son, obey my voice uh, according to that which I command thee. Uh, uh, go now. Uh, to the flock and fetch me uh, from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make the, them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth, and thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his uh, death. I want to speak to you this morning quickly, within the next 15 minutes, on a race that was between Esau and his mom, Rebekah, to be blessed. The story says that uh, Isaac was an old man. And uh, as an old man, he had no idea uh, in regard to the day of his death. And that's very understood. Nobody knows exactly uh, when, uh, if you would, we will die. Uh, but we do know that we all have an appointment with death. And so Isaac did not know when his day and time will come. But uh, common sense told him, because uh, he is so old, that time may uh, come any day, any moment. Uh, however, as an old man, uh, he did not want to leave uh, things undone uh, in his life that was essential, that was important, uh, that needed, if you were to be done, uh, before he closed his eyes and move on, if you would, uh, to heaven. And so uh, uh, the Bible says, because of that, uh, he called Esau, his firstborn, and requested that he would uh, uh, take his weapons uh, uh, and then go on to the uh, field and hunt down a venison. And then I like what he said in the scripture. And he says, then fix it the way that I love. And he said, bring it to me. And he says, then I will eat it. And after I, I'm satisfied, after I'm happy, then I will bless you. And so, uh, passing on his blessing to Esau was, if you would, very vital and also important uh, to Isaac before he died. Unfortunately for Esau, you know the story, while Isaac was speaking to him, uh, Rebekah, the mom, uh, heard about the declaration that, he, uh, if you would, Isaac made, and then she was also interested in getting that blessing. And then so, uh, immediately we had a race. Uh, this blessing that Isaac, if you had in his possession, uh, to give uh, to uh, whoever get to the plate first. And so 
uh, the Bible says what we see is uh, Rebecca called uh, his, uh, her, her, uh, her youngest son, Jacob, and then explained this situation to her. And then kind of explained to him, look, uh, you got to be quick. You, got, you, 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 you have to be uh, uh, very swift. Uh, we got to beat Esau uh, to the plate and get this blessing, if you would, before he showed up. And so uh, to make a long story short, as you uh, know the end of the story, um, uh, Rebecca and Jacob did uh, beat. Esau to the plate, and they stole the blessing, if you would, uh, from him. But i like to see, uh, I want you to see, uh, there was about three different things that exist uh, in order uh, for, uh, if you would, Rebecca, uh, to be able to get this blessing uh, from uh, uh, Isaac, the father. Number one, uh, there was an element of effort that was involved. Uh, which mean uh, Rebecca and Esau, they both were in a race, uh, a race uh, effort to go get some animal, a venison, or maybe perhaps uh, a little uh, a lamb that was around the house, and to quickly uh, kill that lamb, to quickly uh, prepare that lamb, and to quickly uh, bring, if you would, that lamb onto uh, 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 Isaac, uh, if you would, the father. You know, uh, in the Bible and the book of Hebrew, the Bible is very clear on the fact that uh, we as Christians and believers, uh, we are on a race, a race as we are living here on the face of the earth. Uh, the Christian life, when we got saved, uh, uh, as we are living, uh, as we are waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the second coming, uh, we are in a race. Hebrew chapter uh, at 12, verse 1. Let me read it. Uh, this is uh, one of the apostles uh, uh, speaking to the Christians, to the believers, uh, and helping them to understand the importance of, if you would, of recognizing uh, 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 their life on earth uh, is not, if you would, uh, without a purpose, without an aim, without, if you would, a destination, uh, but they need to understand uh, uh, they are on a race. Uh, let me read the, what, what the Bible says uh, for you in verse 1. The Bible says this in, in Hebrew uh, 12, 1, Wherefore, seeing uh, we also are, uh, he said, a compass about with so great a cloud of witnesses, uh, let us lay aside every weight and every sin uh, and be sin uh, which doth easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And so uh, uh, here he's uh, explaining to the Christian, the, the believers, uh, when they got saved, Christ Almighty God in heaven put them in a race. And so they need to run this race, uh, understanding there is uh, 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 something they need to aim uh, for, uh, something they, they're going to get. And that is, uh, if you would, the blessing of God in their lives. In verse 2, the Bible says, uh, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, uh, for the joy that was set before him, uh, endured the cross, despising the, 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 the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. In this race in the Christian life, uh, they are to keep their eyes uh, on the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. They are in a race to be blessed, a race, if you would, uh, uh, to receive the blessing of God uh, in their lives. In the book of Acts, chapter 10, in verse 33, in verse 35, uh, the apostle uh, Peter revealed to the Christians, the believers in his day and age, this race, the blessing that uh, we will get is life everlasting. It is acceptance from God, if you would, uh, Almighty and uh, the Beloved, if you would, and the family of Christ. Let me read that for you quickly. Acts chapter, uh, if you would, 10 uh, and verse uh, 1. Uh, as I'm looking for it, I, I love this one that says, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family, if you would, of God. Uh, this is the race. This is the blessing, if you would, to become a part of the family of God by faith in Christ Jesus. He says in verse uh, 34, 35, in the book of Acts, chapter 10, Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive uh, that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that uh, feareth him 
and walketh righteousness is accepted with them. And in other words, God is not racist. God does not, if you would, uh, uh, make, he's not a prejudiced God. Uh, but rather, the, the blessing that he desired to give to the human race is for all. And this is the race, if you would, the, 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 the Christian life is all about. Uh, now that we are saved, we're born again, we are on our way, if you would, to heaven. We are part of the family, if you would, of God. And so, uh, thank God that you and I, somebody gave us the gospel. Uh, you and I, uh, listen, we receive uh, the message of the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. And so, uh, this race, not only uh, we save, uh, not only are we in it, but we are to look all the way until the end of the days. We are to look all the way until the time that we get to heaven us, we, those of us that are Christian, like the veteran this morning, can be rewarded for what we have done for Christ while we're here on the earth in our body uh, for the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. And the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse, excuse me, Romans chapter 2 and verse 7, uh, the uh, that we receive is immortality. It is life everlasting, which means that you and I, after we die, will be buried. Uh, no doubt, if you would, in the grave. But what the Bible says in the book of First uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 15, we shall, if you would, uh, 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 rise, if you would, with Christ from the dead. Uh, we will be given a glorious body where we will be living forever and ever, if you would, in heaven. We will be immortal. Uh, nobody can kill us anymore. Uh, we, no, no more disease, no more. If you would, uh, uh, may I say death, uh, if you would, uh, we will uh, live forever and ever and ever. And then Revelation chapter 21 and verse 1 and down to verse 5. The blessing that we will receive uh, is to be part of the kingdom of God. The new life, a new world, uh, if you would, uh, a new heaven and a new earth. And then uh, those of us that are saved uh, shall rejoice with Christ forever. We will rule with him, if you would, for evermore. And so, uh, uh, the race, if you would, uh, uh, for this blessing, among, if you would, Isaac, and then also, excuse me, Isaac, as he uh, uh, gave that, if you would, the invitation, this race become a matter, if you would, of importance between Rebecca and, uh, if you would, the son Esau. And, uh, and then so, uh, we see an element of efforts, my dear brother, uh, this morning, if, listen now, listen what I'm about to say, if we understand we are in a race, that means we need to put efforts all the way until the end of the days. All the way until Christ, if you will come back. Listen, uh, the reward that God will give, he will not give it uh, to those who are just sitting by the wayside. He will not give it to those who just, if you would, uh, may I say, uh, uh, kind of slide down, if you would, in the Christian life. No, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there is an element of effort that, 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 that is involved. If you want to build it to the plate, if you want to be blessed, if you want to, at the end, if you would, of your life, of your days, there must be uh, some efforts, if you would, involved. Just like Isaac and Rebecca went and got the venison, got the food, the lamb, and then tried to prepare it, present it to the Father in the way that he loves. So you and I, as long as we live on earth, we need to put some efforts in our Christian life. And I believe getting up, if you want on Sundays, come to the church house, that's efforts. I believe in going out, folks, and then preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's some efforts. I believe on in getting into the book and our knees and our face, uh, if you would, uh, and getting a hold of God uh, in our lives, that's some efforts. I believe, like the preacher said earlier, praying one for another, that is some efforts. Why do we do those? We are on a race to be blessed. The blessing, if you would, of God in our lives. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking uh, quickly as a missionary, uh, me, my wife, and my children, as we get on the plane and then fly across, if you the ocean, going to Haiti and going to the Dominican Republic and pulling all these, if you would, programs together and trying to reach as many people for Christ as possible. Uh, we want to be blessed. That's the whole idea. But we understand that the blessings of God does not come to the lazy. It does not come to those who sit by the wayside. It comes to those who actually put some efforts. And so understanding Isaac, if you 
you will give him the, uh, may I say, request to his son, if you would eat some. And then Esau understanding that he's out in the field trying to get the venison and bring it, if you would, to the father. And then Rebecca heard about it. She jumped, if you would, at the opportunity. And then there is a race. And then quickly bring their food to the father. And as Isaac ate, then he blessed the one who brought the blessing unto him. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, do you want to be blessed this morning? If you do, you must be willing to put some efforts, if you would, into your Christian life. If you would get, uh, if you would be easy, get involved. Uh, Romans chapter uh, uh, 13 and, and verse 3 it, it explained to us that we've been saved unto good works. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. And then uh, 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 Christ again is encouraging us to understand why did he save us. And then, and then it, uh, 1 Timothy 5 and 25, uh, there again we've been saved unto good works and then helping us to understand that there is a blessing waiting on the other side of the Christian life. And then those who will receive it are those who will put efforts for Christ. Secondly, quickly, there's an element of obedience. I love uh, what uh, Isaac uh, quickly uh, told his son. Uh, Go and prepare, if you would, the venison, such as I love, and break it unto me, that I may eat, and after that I may bless thee. There's a level of obedience. Can you see that? As the son ran out, if you would, quickly obey the father so you can go prepare it, even in the deception as Rebecca is speaking to, if you would, uh, Jacob. And I like what she said to the uh, son, Jacob. I only obey my voice. So I'm saying is this this morning. And this race to be blessed by God. If we're going to be blessed, we must be obedient unto God Almighty. Let me read uh, two Bible verses quickly uh, due to the time. Uh, 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 Philemon uh, chapter 1 and verse 21. Philemon chapter 1 and verse at uh, uh, 21. Uh, this is uh, Paul uh, uh, now uh, dealing uh, with a convert uh, that uh, uh, came to uh, Christ and then, and then, uh, and then he's uh, requesting uh, uh, Philemon to do something if you would for him. Here's what the, what the Bible says in verse 21. Having confidence in thy obedience, I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also uh, do more uh, than I say. Uh, so uh, uh, Isaac had confidence in uh, Esau's obedience, and then Rebekah had uh, confidence in Jacob's obedience because those who will be blessed will be those that are obedient, if you would, unto uh, the voice of God Almighty. Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and do what? Preach the gospel, if you would, unto every creature. Obedience. And then uh, I love again uh, to read in the scripture uh, in the regard to uh, the commands of God Love one another as I have loved you. Forgive ye one another as I have forgiven unto you. Uh, do not, if you forsake the assembly of the, of, of the saints, have faith, if you would, in God. Grow in grace and also knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, may not uh, to pray uh, and never, if you would, to cease. If you would, uh, uh, once again, uh, those who want to be blessed, we must be understanding. In this race to be blessed, we need to be obedient. Uh, uh, quickly, uh, the story of Ruth. Uh, the Bible says as Ruth uh, got to Israel with Naomi. And then now, understanding, uh, if you would, uh, uh, need uh, uh, for a husband. Uh, Naomi uh, come to the conclusion in understanding that Boaz would be a perfect uh, perspective for Ruth. And then she said unto Ruth, uh, uh, my daughter, only obey my voice. And she said, uh, I, I want to seek what's best for you. I, I, I want to seek for you. He, he, she said, prosperity for you, yes. When you obey my voice, this is what you have to do. And then leave the rest, if you would, in God's hands. Uh, I don't know about you this morning, but I want to be blessed at the end of my days. I, I, I don't want to die and get to heaven and then to realize that I missed all of on God's blessing. And totally, uh, quickly, there was an element of pleasing to Isaac. I like what he said. Go and prepare the meat as such as I love. Bring it to me. And I may eat, and then make me happy, and then I will bless you. And folks, listen uh, quickly. If we want to be blessed, we must be willing to please God. God Almighty, who made us, created us, who saved us, if you would, who made us in his image, who has gone to the heaven prepared, if you would, uh, may I say that a place for us. But the statement is this, uh, everything that we do, folks, we need to do it in the way that God loves 
in the way God loves. Uh, the Bible says, David said uh, about David, God says, a man after my own heart. And then in the story about uh, Cain and, if you would, uh, uh, Abel, God asked both of them to bring an offering unto him. And then uh, Abel uh, obeyed God's voice. He did, he gave the offering in the way that God wanted it. How, the, how God desires it, but Cain did that. And so he received Abel's offering, rejected, if you would, uh, may I say, uh, a, a Cain uh, 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 offering. So as a conclusion, uh, uh, if we want to be blessed, we must understand the importance of doing things in the way that God, if you would, desired to be done. My marriage, is it in the way that God wanted it to be done? My relationship with my wife, is this the way that God wants it to be done? My relationship with my children, is it the way that God wants it, wanted it to be done? My, my, my involvement and world mission, is it in the way that God wants it to be done? If I want to be blessed, and I like what Isaac said again, if it's the meal, the way that I love, make me make the venison the way that I desire, I will eat, and then when I'm happy, then I will, if you would, uh, bless you. And finally, in the scripture, God spoke to Isaac, excuse me, to uh, Abraham. As God asked him to go and give his only son as an offering. The whole time, you know the story, God is watching him to see will he truly obey his voice. Will he put the efforts in and doing what he asked him to do. And then, will Abraham do it in the way that God, if you would, uh, would be pleased with him? And he did all those three things. He put the effort, wake up the son, put him in, if you would, and a, uh, uh, if you would, uh, a, 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 a donkey, and then get some servants, get some, uh, uh, if you would, offering, uh, if you would, in wood, and then get, and then, and then uh, go to the place where God told him to go. And then when, when, when he got there and actually and saw the place and tell the other servants, wait for me, me and my son, we're going to go a little bit further. And then as he got there, God is watching him, folks. And then God is seeing, is he doing it the way that I'm pleased? And he did. And as he raised his hand to, if you would, start, may I say, stop the child to give him as the offering. The voice of God in heaven screaming, don't touch the child. Now I know you fear me. Now I know you're truly obedient unto my voice. He says, I will bless thee, a race to be blessed. Folks, don't let the devil get you distracted in the Christian life. You are in a race, not with anybody else, but with, on your own personal individual race. A lot of times, a brother or sister a friend by the wayside and we allow the devil to use that to discourage our hearts to give up on the race that God put us on I must run as Paul said as one who desired to obtain a prize a reward the blessings of God you must run also as one who desired to obtain your blessing I'm saying is this this morning don't miss out on your blessings. Live your life. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't complain about the, if you will, negativity around you. Anything deviates you from keeping your eyes all the way to the finishing line. If Christ comes before we die, listen, you should find us putting our efforts, obedient, and then doing everything that we do in the way that pleases God. But if we die and go to heaven, let it be the preacher who stands, if you would, at our, I don't know, if you know, as he's preaching, and then justify this brother or sisters of God all the way until the end. They give it all. They are obedient. They live in a, in a way that pleases God. That's the blessing that's waiting for us at the end of our lives. So my message to you this morning is, Run your race so that way you can receive your blessing that God has for you. As I'm running my race in the Dominican and also in Haiti, so I may receive the blessing that God has for me. So a race between Rebecca and Isa for the blessing. Unfortunately for Isa, Rebecca beat him to the plate, and she got the blessing. I don't know about you. I don't want to miss out on my blessing. 
I want to get God's blessing for my life. Please bow your heads and close your eyes and let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your goodness and your kindness this morning. Thank you that, Lord, we, as Christians and believers, we are on a race. And a lot of times, Lord, we get weary, we get tired in this race. The message, Lord, is really a lot, a lot of times we have sins and hardships and difficulties that hinder us, Lord, from running our race. We're looking at problems and obstacles and unfortunately, we are looking for people that we have no business keeping our eyes on. We ask this morning, help us all eyes upon Jesus. So that way, Lord, we may be looking at the if we discourage this morning, Father, help us to find the encouragement we need from you. If we fall, help us this morning to get back up as we keep our eyes upon you. If we slack, help us, Lord, to pick up the slackness as we go forward with you. Lord, help us to understand truly Eternity is what matters. The blessings and the goodness of thine is truly what matters. Thank you for the message and the word of thine. We love you. We pray you this way in Christ's name. Amen.